about Jesus' death and resurrection was really big news. Do you remember how the people had been waiting for a saviour, a king, to save them from their enemies? Well, suddenly they realised that Jesus was this saviour, but he defeated the greatest enemy, death itself. Now if you want to get good news out really fast, you need people to be able to understand in their own language. I wonder how many languages you can speak or are learning. Well, in today's story, we learn about how the disciples began to speak in languages they'd never learned so that everybody could hear the good news. When Jesus came back to life, he spent 40 days speaking to people, doing miracles, eating with people, and proving that he really was alive again. And over 500 people saw him with their own eyes. Jesus told the disciples that he had to go away, back to the Father, but that he wouldn't leave them on their own. He would send them the gift of the Holy Spirit, who would be with them any time, any place. But the disciples didn't really know what to expect, so they waited in Jerusalem. And something happened at a festival called Pentecost that changed the world forever. And I'm not even exaggerating. One day, as the disciples were hiding, they heard a noise like a great wind. The noise did not come from outside the room, but inside, it filled the whole house. Suddenly, small flames appeared in the air. The flames hovered over each one of them. They were being filled with the Holy Spirit. Their time of waiting was over. They opened their mouths and started speaking languages they had never studied or spoken before. This was a special gift from the Holy Spirit. Now people could hear about Jesus no matter where they came from. At that time, Jerusalem was filled with people from many different countries. There were people from Africa and all over Europe. They spoke many different languages. When the disciples went outside, the other people heard them. The crowd was amazed. What was that strange sound we heard? You heard it too? It sounded like a mighty wind. Hey, listen to those men talking, someone else in the crowd called. How is it possible? These men all come from Galilee, but they speak like we do. The Holy Spirit had stripped all fear from the followers of Jesus. They no longer huddled together in an attic room, too scared to open the door. Instead, they poured out into the streets. They laughed and talked at all at the same time. They made no secret of their faith in Jesus. They told everyone they met about him. People started to ask, what do we need to do? And Peter told them. I'm gonna summarize what Peter told them to do. And everything begins with a B to help you remember. He said, be sorry. Realize you don't always get things right and you need God to forgive you. Believe in Jesus and his resurrection and that he's the son of God. Then you will be forgiven. And that's a promise. Be baptized to show that a change has happened. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's a promise too. Be added to the family of God, we call that the church, so that you can grow and be a fruitful follower of Jesus. We'll talk about that one later. That day, over 3,000 people became followers of Christ or Christians. And because there were so many, they met together in little groups in people's homes. They learned from the apostles about Jesus together. They shared bread and wine together to remember Jesus and what he'd done for them. And they shared everything that they had with one another. And daily, more and more people heard the message and became part of this new community of believers. So that's how the church as we know it began. Churches come in lots of shapes and sizes. Across the world, sometimes they meet in great big cathedrals or in small chapels, or some churches even meet in schools or people's homes. Churches do things differently sometimes too. They might have different music, or you might have to sit down or stand up at various points in the service. But wherever they are following Jesus and doing those same things that the early disciples did when they met together, they are a part of God's big family, the church. And that's how the Holy Spirit coming changed the world forever. Today, the Holy Spirit helps people to understand what Jesus has done and makes it possible for them to believe in the power of Jesus to forgive them. When they become part of God's family, he gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit, which means they come alive to God, being made aware of his presence and help in their lives. And we'll find out a little bit more about that in the next video. But first, I wonder, can you tell the person next to you the story of what happened at Pentecost? And can you remember any of the things that Peter preached that began with B? See you in the next video.